Hello everyone. Welcome to eGate AI. In this video, I'm going to tell you a story and I call it a DBMS story. So I have framed this story to sort of give you a walkthrough of the uh, entire concept of database management system and a little bit about warehousing. Um, the idea of this story is that if you watch this story till the end, you will be able to map to, you know, all the concepts of database management system. Not to the uh, great depth, but at least, you know, you will have understanding. And if somebody talks about, you know, something um, in database systems, say concurrency or indexing, you will be able to relate to the problem. OK, it won't sound very strange to you. So so I suggest that whether you know database system already or whether this is, you know, um, something which you don't know at all, this will give you a complete overview and also a great um, understanding of all the concepts of database management system. So stick with me till the end and let's get started. So we all use online systems, right? Online uh, websites and many of the sites will ask you to create account, right? So when you create account, usually you will have a username and a password combination. Now, what happens is so 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 you use multiple applications right and with time this number increases because you use many applications right right and because every day you know we find new applications being launched and very interesting things are coming up so this count increases in an exponential fashion right so it's like this it is increasing now what you do is that with time it becomes a problem right so what you figure out that okay i cannot remember all the applications and username password and at the same time it's not recommended that you know i keep same username and password for all the applications so so what you would like to do is you would like to store those username and password into a txt file now over the years what happens is that this txt file which is storing your user and username and password entries to this file increases rapidly right and let's say now it becomes like 200 username password okay i'm just taking hypothetical condition as you know i'm just taking a real world example but it might have some imaginary values now again this txt also bec becomes a problem to you you can do control f and you know find um, sites and username but still it's not the right way to do it okay so you figure out a way and what you do is you create a spreadsheet somebody can call also call it excel right so you create a spreadsheet like like this and now you have three columns like site name username and password now this is where you you can also apply filter sorting right and all those uh, sort of things all those operations which makes your job easy so what you did that here when you had this database when you had this txt file this was also a database right so database is nothing but collection of related data right and meaningful data and you had this meaningful data stored in the txt file so it was a database of course right so it was a database but you moved it was sort of inefficient database right it was efficient to some extent when the number increased it was not any more efficient so you move to efficient version which is spreadsheet and then this is a database which you can use for your password storage and password management right so this spreadsheet is also a database okay good perfect now you realize that this problem which i have faced may not be a unique problem right a lot of people may be uh, facing this problem and that's why you think that oh uh, i can create a product around it it can be a million dollar idea right so what you do is that out of this spreadsheet or some 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 conceptual thing you want to create a product okay so you want to create application right and then of course because you want to create application so you need application database right most of the application are uh, created with some application database where the data is stored into the database and codes are you know code are written into the code base right so we can discuss in great detail but uh, uh, for this example so you need application database right 
so that's what you need to create but because you need to create application database and you are going to let's say hire a team you are going to hire professionals because it's not anymore a simple project it's a product right so what you're going to do is you are going to explain this entire you know idea or entire uh, uh, feature set to developers or managers or you know product owners and this you cannot do in pure technical terms or uh, or or sort of you know a very layman term right so it has to be semi technical so what you do is you do it with some diagrams and all some block diagram like this okay and then some relation etc you show with another entity right so this this entity i'm saying right so block i'm calling entity then relation is this symbol so you use some defined symbol right and we call it conceptual modeling okay so conceptually you explain this entire application to your team to technical group of technical and non-technical people so this conceptual modeling you do right and this is nothing but er diagram portion so we use er diagram for conceptual modeling now there are some other um, practical models for example uml diagram etc right so this is also part of so part of this process that you use these uh, diagrams for um, sort of discussion among developers and your team after this discussion is done what your developer team development team is going to do is that they are going to um, sort of design the actual database okay so they will uh, let's say name your database as um, password application right and then they will um, uh, design various tables where they will plan to store a lot of things depending upon uh, uh, how you have decided your features right so we will also in fact learn how you know from er diagram we define or you know we derive how many tables are required but that's what is called basically what they are going to do is they are going to sort of uh, decide uh, tables or, or i should call it let's say schema this is also called schema right schema then they will decide relation they will also decide constraints right so this entire practice of you know defining uh, these tables relations constraints and various aspects is called database design which will uh, which you study under database design so let me call it collectively as database design right so this is database design now once the database design part is done that that means that your application which you plan to develop now this storage structure is ready right that how the data will be stored okay so so that means you know the infrastructure is ready infrastructure for storing the data or retrieving the data right so so now what you need to do is basically you need to sort of read write data in this table which you just designed right so i call it read or basically first you will have to write but okay let's write it read and write okay so you read write to the db database right and this you need to do with sql that's where you talk about sql structured query language right so this is basically sql now once your uh, sql is ready what you do is you sort of use some programming language let's say we use python okay we write all our code in python this is our code base which is not the scope of uh, this lecture or this um, this subject but let's say this is code base where your software is written and this code will you know use this sql okay and will write and read from this database correct so this is how this will work okay now at certain point you will realize and this always happens that something you built was not very much efficient okay so that's where uh, this comes into picture which is called or let's write it so now you need to work on performance and this performance is achieved with of course code optimization but in our context 
there is something which is called indexing. So you index the data in a particular format. We will also learn, you know, B tree, B plus tree, all the indexing techniques. But this is where, you know, indexing comes into the picture in our story. Now there is something more, right? So depending upon database management systems we use, for example, let's say we use MySQL or Postgres, or now we also have MariaDB. So these all have their concurrency control technique, okay? So as a developer, you don't get into it, okay? But knowing that concurrency control helps you optimize your program, okay? So it's not a developer job, so I'm just using this dotted line, okay? And what you need to do now, or what we will learn here is basically like concurrency control. What does it mean? And also basically transaction processing. What does it mean is, uh, as I said, like this is completely database dependent. So here what happens is we try to understand and try to learn as a, you know, database student. We try to learn how does database management system manage concurrency, okay? And how does they like uh, do their transaction processing? And basically transaction is the smallest unit of, uh, uh, you know, query or operation. So, so what happens is that uh, here what we learn is basically uh, this case assume that you know because you are building this application for many users so there is a possibility that thousands of users are using this application at once okay now there is a great chance that all the users are trying to write to the database at the same time or they are trying to read from the table at the same time right and this can cause problem and this is what solving this problem or handling this problem is basically concurrency control so let's say if somebody is writing the user one is writing then user two is waiting right and if they both are writing to different table then we allow them to write so there are various techniques to handle this concurrency which database management systems automatically does but as a student we will understand this here so in our story this is where transaction processing and concurrency control fits like this is something which we will learn about okay now this is sort of entire process of application development so we learned how we started thinking about storing password and we came to designing a unicorn startup right uh, application now let's understand what happens after this now we have built a, 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 a successful startup successful product now the problem which you might face is that which is basically is related to decision making. So decision making is what? Like, let's say, you know, you want to get report about your users, how they are creating, how they are, you know, accessing application, where are they, let's say, you know, dropping from the application, all those analytics you want to get. And usually for bigger applications, it is not done directly on this database, which you created, right? This schema, etc., or the database, which is like operating with this software, you don't create there. You don't directly, you know, create a report there. What you do is from this database, okay, you derive a warehouse. So we create a data warehouse. What does it mean? This means that time to time we fetch data from the original database from here. Okay. We fetch data and then we put it into a warehouse, which is specially created in order to generate some report. When I said specially created, it really has uh, some meaning. Uh, so this database here is basically created for transaction and we call it OLTP, Online Transaction Processing. We will learn about it, of course. And this is basically created only for generating report. So while creating this database, when developer were, you know, sort of designing this, uh, this ER diagram and this UML diagram, okay, they were concerned about the performance that how fast we can write into the database and we can retrieve information. But here while designing this warehouse, they are not worried about end user. What they do is because from here they extract data, they transform and they load into a different database structure which is created for a completely different application which is only for reporting, right? So I call it or I can also call it analytics, okay? 
and this is where your data warehouse comes into picture this is basically data warehousing and here we will learn the concepts related to data warehousing so this was the entire story i wanted to talk about to revise the story you wanted to create a, a password application right you wanted to solve your personal problem and you started to store it into text file but later on you uh, stored it into sheet then you realized that it's a good idea we should create a product you discussed it with um, your developers where er diagram helped you and with the er diagram they were able to generate this relational schema right this uh, this schema which was original database and sql helped you to to sort of you know retrieve and store data from this original database and then uh, indexing helped you to increase the performance right to that database and while all these things were done by or uh, all these things were done with database management systems you also learned how database management systems uh, handle concurrency and then because this application is very much successful you want to you know keep deriving reports which will help you um, take some good business decisions so you created a data warehouse and data warehouse was designed for efficient reporting and that's how our story ends so i hope uh, this this was the coverage of you know all the concepts we will learn every concept um, in detail of course great detail and you will definitely understand everything um, I, i'll i'll pour all my experiences which um, i have learned designing n number of applications so far and um, yeah I'll, I'll make sure that you understand everything whether you have already learned anything or not so this was my goal with this short story um, i hope you liked it uh, do let me know uh, about this approach or if you have any suggestions please feel free to share i'm open uh, towards any feedback or inputs thank you very much